All right, so basically what I'm going to do in this video is explain uh, in four steps how do we approach a problem that uh, tells us to find the expression, uh, uh, use the definition, which the definition for the Raymond uh, Eric Psalm. We're going to use the definition for the Raymond Psalm to find an expression for the area under the graph. And that's of f as a limit. Okay, um, if you're like me, uh, first time calculus student, you look at this problem and you basically think it's gibberish, it's Greek. What do I do? Help. All right, so hopefully this gives you a little more insight. So we're going to jump right into this. The first thing that I like to do is you, I like to basically understand exactly what's going on and what each uh, part of this expression uh, mean and that can be explained in a later video so hopefully you have a solid understanding coming into this video of what all these symbols mean all right so we'll go ahead and for the first part we're gonna explain uh, we're gonna just basically get the general expression for Delta X Okay, so the first thing you want to do is just get the general expression for delta x. And that is what we see here. Delta x. It's the little triangle with the x. Okay, so we want to get a general uh, expression for that. Meaning, we don't really want a particular number. Because remember, we're going from n to infinity. Let me grab this marker here. We're going from n to infinity. So... That's basically going to say we're going to keep going and we're going to keep going and we're going to keep going. So we're going to get the general expression. And how we're going to do that is we're going to use the formula. Uh, let me just grab a pencil tool. And we're going to take B. This is not user friendly. Maybe should have used a different program. But we're going to take B minus A. <clears throat> And we're going to divide that by n. And that's standard. And this is basically the, the width of the rectangles. But for this purpose, we're just going to be getting each part. And we're going to plug it into the equation. And that's going to be it. So when we're looking at the 4 less than or greater than x, less than or greater than 6, this is our interval. Okay, and if we're looking on a graph, the interval from 4 to 6, we're going to start at 4. So this is going to be our A, <clears throat> and this is going to be our B. And, and uh, 6 minus 4 all over N, because in this instance, we, we don't, know what n is n is just some number all right so we're going to go ahead and do a little algebra very simple uh, 2 over n okay and so that's going to be our delta x okay this little symbol we see here so once we have that we're going to do next is we're going to find a general expression for xi. And that's this little uh, part right here. Basically, it's going to be x, OK? But xi is going to be our new value that we're going to be looking for. And we'll talk about that a little later. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to get that value. Um, that's going to be called our sub interval, OK? And basically, if you should know what a sub interval is. Is is each interval is its own uh, is a sub of the whole interval. Okay, so you're gonna have something between four and six each one, and it's gonna be a sub interval. This will make a little better sense on the graph. Um, but for now, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna do it mathematically. Uh, and so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start at four. Okay. And we're we're gonna go, and we're gonna have to say four 
plus delta x which is 2n okay and this is gonna be we're gonna start at 4 so think of a graph and think of this is one rectangle It's starting at 4 so every time you go over to the next rectangle you're gonna have to say 4 plus my delta n okay so what we're gonna do in this instance here this is one because any just just imagine this a, a, a one imaginary one we don't really have to put anything when we have one there so the next thing would be if we went out all the way to six because this is our last interval okay we would take it four plus two okay two over n like so and we would take this all the way out until we got the six okay so that's our sub interval that's the second thing we need <clears throat> now keep in mind as well um, we need to think about there's a coefficient that should be in front of <clears throat> or after really doesn't matter uh, after each delta like 2i and this i is basically uh, that that's basically our uh, imaginary number or what have you and it's basically instead of writing um, 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay that's gonna be an indicator it's just we're just gonna put i there okay it's a placeholder what have you whatever you want to call it and so that's what our i, gonna, our I is gonna be in that case all right, so yeah, that wasn't helpful, was it? Okay, so we're just gonna leave that be. All right, so we're gonna move on and pick my pencil tool up. So we have our sub interval. Now we're gonna do, we're gonna just plug all this into, uh, plug all the general stuff that we have here. We have two general equations we're gonna plug it in because if you look at the original equation up here okay uh, you you'll see that that's what happens uh, we have a XI which is uh, our new okay let's just go ahead and put it over here okay because if we look in the equation we're looking for X okay so we need we need XI our new interval which is going to be basically one of these okay so that's going to equal our XI is going to equal 4 plus 2i over n and see now it should make a little more sense now because if you think about it that I is a placeholder okay I is going to equal every number throughout the interval all the way until we get to six okay so if we imagine that I is going to be every number from the interval we can just go ahead and put it here because we have to times this uh, each time anyways to get to that six okay so that's our new X so that's going to be here and then we have our Delta X so we have all our general expressions the only thing left now is to go ahead and just plug them into the equation okay so uh, we have the limit you know write everything out here I love to say X uh, but in this case we're not doing X we're doing n as n approaches uh, infinity <clears throat> okay and then you can if you want just write R which is the rectangle over N and all of that is going to equal our limit as N approaches infinity mm, I should have used a different program but here we are okay so we're gonna have this nice little uh, symbol here <clears throat> and I'm just gonna briefly tell you what this means 
so you get an idea because you know if you you're watching this and you're trying to understand uh, this is a one <clears throat> you're trying to understand it it may be a little confusing for me you know I'm just gonna explain it as if like I'm the person learning for the first time like I was um, so basically what this is saying is everything that follows follows this which is gonna be the expression I want to get the sum okay this is a summation notation sum um, <clears throat> at I equals one okay and remember I uh, here okay it's it's gonna equal one two three four five six so I is gonna equal all those numbers in the interval here okay and um, until we reach n okay because remember n is some number uh, in this case we don't know because we're going to infinity okay so <clears throat> we're gonna do that and uh, once we write out everything here uh, you know we just follow the rest of the equation which will be f of x i delta x okay and then what's left to do now is just simplify um, because we want to simplify if you ever see this in your calculus student and it says do not evaluate the limit um, we're really not evaluating the limit by just placing everything into the equation so we got to use one and two and we got to just place it into the equation so basically what we'll do uh, you know instead of me writing the limit as x approaches uh, infinity over again each time just know that this is gonna all equals equal the area so I'm just gonna write in remember you put that limit as uh, n approaches infinity and so what we end up getting uh, at the end here is we have f of x of i so we're gonna take x of i right here we're gonna plug it in plus to i over n okay and, and then we need delta so we have we have two terms here one term and two term okay and so now we need delta and we already found that here which is no more than the width uh, and, and so we're gonna do it that way uh, well let's back up a little bit okay so in a good world if I wrote it all out you would you would see that this will be your xi and then you have 2 over n delta okay but we have to write an expression so they give us this so we have to place everything in here okay and so the end and result okay so the solution would be uh, f or excuse me 4 plus 2 i over n because that's x okay this is our new xi and we're gonna uh, have to square square that okay let's see here yeah right square it just have to check and make sure everything is right here and plus and then the square root of 1 plus 2 and then we put our x our new xi in again or plus 2i over n okay and so we've done that we're going to close it with brackets and then we, we can't forget that we we still have we got to multiply this by our delta because that's just how the equation works we have to multi all, multiply all this by our delta x so then we just simply come out here in brackets and multiply by 2n so I hope this was a little helpful uh, I always like to try to get my uh, 
problems in two steps um, by basically finding out what needs to be done first, second, third, fourth, and then finding out what means what. And that's the basis to solving every problem. But if you like this video, please comment, subscribe, and uh, if you have anything that I could have done better or any suggestions, please leave those comments below. Again, if you'd like to know uh, what these mean in detail, I'll be making a video of that as well. But again, always thank you for watching my video and don't be afraid to step into math. Thank you for watching.